Welcome into this Five Clubs conversation. The guy who's going to join me is very well versed in the inner workings of the PGA Tour, but also understanding the mindset of the people who just invested in the PGA Tour. I'm talking about Joe Ogilvie, played on the PGA Tour for 15 years. He is now in wealth management. So what exactly is going on? Well, he penned an open letter to the membership last fall. What's his perspective on this investment group? What it means for the future investment of the public investment fund of Saudi Arabia? And who are and what are the most important assets that the PGA Tour owns? All of that and a whole lot more coming up right now. only a grip it's only my sole connection to this it's only in my hands on every single shot it's an extra two yards of carry when it matters most yeah only a grip mine are only golf pride respect the grip and with that We welcome in the Blue Devil himself. He actually doesn't look bad considering his Devils uh, took one on the chin. They led for all of 16 seconds in Chapel Hill last weekend. Uh, (laughs) Isn't that a nice way to bring you in, Joe? Yeah, yeah, you you brought the high heat straight off the bat. Um, (laughs) But we'll we'll, uh, we'll see what happens in Cameron on uh, March 6th. Uh, Absolutely. There's nothing like it. And I will be in the building. (laughs) Well, there's not, you know, as somebody like yourself who went to Duke, I I was talking, uh, you know, just to to start off uh, as an aside, you know, these things are so precious. Like, you know, as somebody who went there, were were you in the building for all four years when you were there for Carolina Duke? For Carolina Duke, I think I missed one. We may have had a tournament, a golf tournament over one of those. But yeah, I, I camped out my freshman year. And then luckily we had recruits for two of the two of the next three years. So when you have a recruit, you get the you get to sit under the hoop and and do that thing. But uh, now it, it's 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 fantastic. If you're a basket, if you're a college basketball fan, it doesn't get much better than Duke Carolina. No, it, it doesn't. Let me um, there. There's so many directions that we can go and I'm going to try to keep this and not make it too, too much of a, a serpentining from one direction to the next but i know i can i can talk to you ask you about virtually everything as it pertains to the pga tour let, let me start with with the deal itself uh yeah. strategic sports group if you look at the cadre of, of people who are involved in this investment group it's like the lineup of the 1927 yankees it's wildly impressive um what is the most encouraging thing of what you know uh, with respect to this deal as it pertains to the membership of which you were a part of uh, for many, many years? Yeah, I think that, I mean, stepping a, taking a step back, I mean, when, when, when private equity and a bunch of the different groups expressed interest, I mean, the, the lineup of people, I mean, it was really a who's who in, in, in American business. And I mean, I'm not going to say everybody in American business was, was inquiring, but I, I think 65% of the of the American business leaders were probably on one side of the deal from the Friends of Golf group to the Acorn group to Liberty Media to strategic sports. So that was that was that's encouraging. I mean people see the value in the PGA Tour. Um strategic sports I think the board was most comfortable with them closing um but every one of these groups could have brought billions of dollars to the table. That was not a problem. Capital was not was not the issue. I think the board, and I wasn't in the boardrooms, but I think they were they were comfortable with it. I mean, Jay Monahan obviously has a long term. Uh, he used to work for Finley Sports. Um, Sam Kennedy, who's going to be on the PGA Tour Enterprises board, his sister works at the PGA Tour. Um, so there was a lot of uh, Mark Flaherty, who's on the board of the PGA Tour, was a mentor to Sam Kennedy. Um, and and to Jay Monahan. So there was a the board of the PJ Tour is very comfortable with strategic, especially on the independent side. Um and they they're they're really smart guys. They 
They haven't really dug under the hood, as far as I know. Um, the tour, the PGA Tour was very, very late in getting them all types of data and all, all the financials and things like that. But um, look, the PGA Tour players are going to have equity in this thing. I hope, and people think that I'm totally naive in saying this, I hope it becomes an owner's mentality uh, for the tour players. Because if they do that, Gary, I think it solves a lot of the problems that's currently happening in the game. And And by doing that, if I own something... I want that product to be as best as it can possibly be. And in golf, to have a great product, well, you need great fans, number one. I mean, the players are players are important, but the fans are incredibly important. Um, so they need to feel comfortable. But I think if you're if you're an owner, you you want the best players in the world playing on the PGA tour more often. And you know, I think it'll take time to get over that hump, but hopefully as these guys think of themselves as owners and the owners and the equity gets doled out, I think you'll start to see hopefully some of this pain, um, hopefully it'll subside. Why are the fans in golf so important? Is it because they support the product or because they support the products that support the product? Well, I think I think two things. Number one, I think they're the best. I mean, you think about it, they're the most dedicated fans in any sport. And what I mean by that is if you're a general admission buyer of a ticket on the PGA Tour, you're driving from your home to a parking lot that's probably 15 or 20 minutes away from the venue. Now, think about that. We're the only sport that has that. So you, you, you go 20 minutes away and then you take a shuttle and then you get dropped off. And then you go in. I mean, so by the time you leave your house, it's probably an hour, an hour and 15 minutes by the time you actually get to watch golf. And they're coming in by the thousands. I mean, that's a, you know, everybody talks about the fans need, you know, we got to re-engage the fans. I mean, part of it is they're, they should be treated as their guests in our venues. I mean, they, they really do. They, they've, they've come and we shouldn't charge them an arm and a leg for, you know, Cokes and waters and beer and everything else. We should, they, we should, it should be almost like you, you're treating a guest. I mean, the masters does it the best, right? The dollar 50 Pimoto cheese sandwiches. And it costs you an arm and a leg to get in there. But once you're in, um, I mean, I don't charge you for parking, but you just feel like, Oh my gosh, they're not taking advantage of me. Even the, even the merch, which they could charge. I mean, they have pricing power. They can charge whatever they want, but so that's what I mean by the fan. And then the more fans you have, it enhances the the viewer experience on TV and, and on the digital because it looks like a big, it feels like a bigness when you have people lining the fairways and you have when you have roars and everything else. I mean that enhances. And by the way, that's that's free to you if you're the PGA Tour or you're the host organization. Getting a a person that's going to enhance the viewership for the the people at home. That that's a not only is it free, they're actually paying to help you. So that's what I mean by. The fan is just incredibly important, and um, I, I hope in all of this they recognize that. I, re I hope they recognize that that is that is an incredibly valuable person to um, treat well. No, you're right. It, it, you, you know, it's not it's not a, a reach at all. That the golf fan sees less of the actual product than football fans, basketball fans, baseball fans. When you sit in your seat at those other sports it's right in front of you. The, the effort made, one, to get on the property of a golf tournament, then to decide, okay, I'm gonna follow this group or I'm gonna sit in these stands. Um, that's why, you know, I was saying about when you get there, you know, fans may watch, I don't know, in total, 26 minutes, that's just an arbitrary number yeah. of golf shots as opposed to a three-hour football game where, look, you may spend some time at the, at the suite level. That's where I'm, I'm, I'm getting back to this whole idea of, you know, what are they buying into? They're buying into the association of the Fortune 100, Fortune 50, whatever, automotive sector, healthcare, financial, um, you know, it's, it is a murderer's row again of, of who is investing in the game of golf. And SSG is well aware of that. So when they, when they see that and they see all, you know, whether it's Wells Fargo, um, you know, who knows, on down the line, who's going to replace Wells Fargo in Charlotte, um, what are they seeing as the most valuable assets of the tour? What are they seeing and going, 
that can be monetized way beyond what its current value or the revenue it's currently producing. What are the best assets that the tour is providing to SSG? Well, I think it's the game. I think it's a game itself and the professional game itself, right? I mean, the PGA Tour is the best tour in the world. Um, I don't think that that's debatable. Um, there, it's, it's also a scarcity value, right, Gary? I mean, you know, the NBA has 30 odd teams and each one of those teams, I mean, sports has always been priced like art. Um, it's not, you don't do a discounted cash flow statement to find the value of the PGA Tour. You You look at it as like, look, it's, it's pretty good. Now, the tour schedule is very bloated. Um, they will reduce tournaments. There is zero doubt about that. Um, they will they will make scarcity the the linchpin of this thing. So there'll be, you know, let's call it 35 events as opposed to 47 events or something okay. like that. They will um, they see you know, I think at headquarters, it was it's probably been undermanaged for the better part of 10 years. Um, it's gotten a little bloated. So they'll they'll put controls in on that. They'll um, they'll invest in the digital product. They'll look at the tournaments as you know, some of these tournaments are kind of. They've they've also been undermanaged. I mean, um, I think the tour is going to make you know, they're changing the Palm Beach tournament right now. Um, it's going to go from basically breaking even to almost making four or five million dollars. Um, for instance, I think that there's a lot of things that they can do on the international side. And, you know, we can get into PIF and, and how that, that all works. But, you know, is the really smart thing the tour did and the players did was is to make it a calendar year schedule. And so now you've got a January 5th, let's call it to September 1st schedule. I mean, everybody every league has a defined has a defined season and that's kind of the pga tour season now and so you've got september 1st to december 20th to do something on the international side so there's some things that they can do there but i mean i think that this will this is a scarcity investment and it's a i mean they're buying the mona lisa of golf that's what they're doing that's what they're investing in the um you know, get very, very few times you get a chance to invest at the league level, and that's what that's what they're doing. The um, it's interesting what you said about these events, and I want to get to something that you wrote in your open letter that you wrote to the tour membership last fall about looking at these events quote as as franchises. But let let me follow on what you said about the number of events. If 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 the number of events is lessened, which I support that, I think all sports require us to need them, to want them, to miss them. Um, yep. And, and we, we, the 800-pound gorilla, we have to miss more than any other, which is the National Football League. Uh, it's getting ready to pull the curtain, you know, this weekend. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll die lousy and we'll watch every single report from training camp starting in July in the dead of summer. Um, and and they, have, they have a death grip on our consciousness. They, they do. But if you lower the number of tournaments and you're already limiting playing opportunities, for instance, the NFL, let's just go 53 men, 32 teams. You go the National Basketball Association, 15 members of a roster, 30 franchises, same thing, baseball, 25 man rosters. These guys, as you know, God, there's so many guys who can play. I mean, yeah. really, really play. And if you reduce this down to what? Less opportunity and less number of players in the field, you got to have some real churn, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah you do. Um, and I think that's the, that's the hard thing. I mean, I, I, you know, I read a lot in the off season and uh, Ryan's armor, you know, referred yes. to himself and his ilk as the mules. And, <laughs> you know, I was a mule to a certain extent. And, um, you know, <laughs> us, us mules, we, we kind of just want to know what the what the game what the parameters are and we'll go figure out how to how to work that and we'll finish top one we'll figure out how to finish top 125 but give me a give me a fair shot right and so when you went to a calendar year schedule which was really smart and but then at the same time you went to a signature series the signature series events where you cut basically seven tournaments from 144 to 100 well 120 man to 144 man fields down to, you know, 75 or 80, you eliminated a giant amount of um, playing opportunities. And what, what they, what they needed to do, but they 
for whatever reason they didn't do it, is they needed to re reduce the amount of fully exempt players, right? I mean, they needed to go to 110 or 100. And then you let all those guys, you say, look, if you're, if you're a top 100 on the PGA Tour, that's an incredible achievement. Then you, 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 you let the signature series events be 120 people, and then maybe, maybe you have four without cuts or something like that. I mean, you're, you're kind of recreating the WGCs to a certain extent. Um, but they didn't do that, and they're not going to do that next year. In fact, they added an opposite field event. And I get why they did it, but, you know, eventually, um, I think in 2026 is, when the, is the year that you're going to see a lot of change. With, of and and you're, you're saying that based on what you think is th this deal and whatever subsequent deal gets done with potentially the public investment fund, uh, Justice Department, all that, the 2026 is kind of detente in terms of we're going to co-op space, There's going, we're, we're going to see these guys playing against each other and whatever they're going to be rebranded on is, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, because if you think if you think through it, um, we already said that the top 125 guys on the FedEx Cup are going to keep their cards this year. So you can't I don't think you can go retroactive retroactively change that. So even if you do a deal with PIF and even if there's a way for the guys that left to come back, there aren't any spots. Right. I mean, there's just there's just there's only so many there's a finite number of opportunities. Right. So. That's going to get pushed to 2026. I don't know what that looks like at all, um, but 2026 is when you're going to see some changes and you're probably going to see a reduction in the schedule and you're going to see, you know, you'll be able to do some partnerships with with the DP World Tour. And if, I'm assuming you'll probably do something with the PIF um, internationally from September 1st to the to the 20th. But, you know, those are those are all that'll be done. That'll be done. And it's probably talked about. I mean, strategic sports was, was in Saudi Arabia with Jay. Um, when was that two weeks ago? So they, they have, they're talking, um, they're talking. So we'll, we'll see what, we'll see what ultimately happens. Um, the, Joe, you mentioned the world golf championship series. And when that was, when that was constructed, you know, late nineties, 1999, um, and it was no cut events, um, small fields, you were insulating and really wrapping Kevlar around, you know, the top 15, top 20. I, I know that a couple of players like figured out like, okay, if I can get in this, you know, and, and yeah. by virtue of having four rounds, these, these, the deep end of the pool, um, I'm, I'm getting fortified with all these world ranking points. I have no problem with the best players getting protected as much as possible. Like these signature series events and the points available to them and it's elevated to that. Every sport protects their stars. This is the way they're doing it. The National Football League, you can't hit a quarterback. And LeBron James and, and Steph are probably not getting foul called on them late in the game because they drive the product. So I, I get all that. But if you limit, let's say these signature series events to less than 100, come on. You're, you are you are flying in the face of what you have projected yourself to be, which is the strongest, deepest tour in the world. And we all we got to do, Joe, is look at the month of January and the guys who are capable of jumping up and winning, not just events that are not si signature series events. How do you kind of protect the best, but give opportunity <laughs> to, to the mules, which, by the way, is one of the great terms um, yeah, ever coined. Not, not surprising. Ryan Armour, you know, <laughs> he's an Ohio guy, great guy, um, out of out of Kent State. But uh, no, it's one of the great things. I, look, I think that one thing about the FedEx Cup and the WGCs and everything else, they 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 changed. I mean, when they announced the it was designated events and then it was signature series, um, I said, look, it'll be one thing we know is that they will be changed and iterated over and over and over again, and. You know, anyone that did the math in September could see like we were going to have a playing a playing problem with Q School and some of the uh, Corn Ferry guys. I mean, they just weren't going to get in. I mean, very few guys are getting in this week. And I think there's 17 full feet, full point events that a rookie could play. Um, might be 18, but I think it's 17. They're not in the Players Championship. So, I mean, that's a that's a that's a small, small schedule. 
Um, and once you get to the memorial, you're only in, I mean, from the end of May to um, to the first playoff event, you're, you're only playing six events. Um, and that's not a big schedule. And two of those events are, are opposite field events with, I think, only um, – 300 points to the winner. So, I mean, you, you are, you are at a major, major league deficit. And so that's where I say that, you know, they're going to have to go to fewer cards. Um, and then, you know, with the signature series events and with the players getting equity, I think that's the carrot, right? You just say, look, you guys are getting some, you guys are going to get equity and it should be significant. And we're going to make these events as, as good as they can possibly be. And I don't think that that is, a 75 person event, but maybe, maybe, and I said this too, look, let, let Jack and Tiger and Arnold's tournament, let them, let them be whatever they want to be. Yeah. Uh, they're, they, they have the gravitas. They deserve to, however they see fit. If Tiger wants a 70 man field, if Jack wants a 120 man field, if, if Arnold, Sam Saunders or, and his sure. family want a whatever, 156 man field, Arnold's an every man, um, let them do that. And then I think the signature series events, it makes too much sense to me that everyone, if you're a city that has a PGA tour event, um, it makes sense that you deserve the best players in the world to come to your city once every three years or once every four years, whatever that rota is. I mean, major league baseball does it with the all-star game and they do it with the super bowls. Like, look, you've supported us. You built a new stadium. Great. You're getting a super bowl and you know, seven years after the new stadium or whatever. We should be doing that in golf. I mean, the best players in the world should be going to Moline, Illinois and support John Deere. The best players in the world should be going to Detroit once every three years. They should be going to Palm Springs or or, or wherever. Um, I just think that that makes too much sense. So they'll, they'll be changed um, and venues will be changed. I think you're going to have more, more tournaments probably go, maybe go by, you know, two cities. Um, as opposed to just one home. I'm not saying that's going to happen every week, but I think you'll see that. Joe, l let me just, l let, let's talk about something I know pretty well. And you played the Wells Fargo for years. Um, yeah. When it was built and born, it was like, okay, this is the way it's supposed to be. And, and from the, you know, the two player AMs on a Wednesday uh, to all the trappings that, that you could possibly have, all the bennies, you know, private planes for, for wives up to the mountains, down to the beach, booze cruises for the wife, whatever. They did it all. But, but beyond that, and more importantly, the golf course, the field, and here we are at the end of the road for this sponsor. And I know it on good authority that the tour turned away north of $20 million a year from a bellwether sponsor in a market yeah. that has been money for them, sponsorship fan participation, you name it. And by the way, their current business model is for less than half of that, based on 156 person field, concessions, two T starts, split tees. I mean, and now you're going to a signature series event and you're, and you're figuring out like, okay, you know, we're gonna do this. We're gonna offer you 20X for four or five years. Maybe there was an option here, I don't know. And the tour says, mm, no. Really? Yeah. So if if um, if you go to Hermes, um, you can buy a Birkin bag for twelve thousand dollars or whatever the number is, which I I have not done for my wife. Um, but if I bought that Birkin bag for twelve thousand dollars, I could go sell it for twenty almost immediately. Hermes has the most pricing power of any retailer in the world. I mean, they don't. They literally burn, if they sell too much of something, they, they burn the rest because they don't want to be for the masses. And I, and, I, and I use that analogy because, you know, okay, we might be able to get more money from a different sponsor, but we have a longtime partner. We were only a few million dollars apart. And that's, let's call it 12 million over six years. And the biggest disappointment for me, Gary, in that negotiation was we were willing to flush a partner for 12 million over six years or whatever the number is. But we haven't cut one dime in expenses in Ponte Vedra. And that is a bloated, bloated organization. And we've got a lot of great people in that organization. But, 
I mean, we're willing to to punt our to punt our partners, but we're not willing to look ourselves in the mirror and say we need to change. And that's that's a bit that's where I that's a big disappointment for me because if you talk to people inside the the organization, I mean, we have whole divisions that don't talk to one another, and we have people that like I don't know what they do. Um, and these, this is not coming from me, this is coming from inside the organization, people talking to me and talking to others, talking to strategic sports groups. Um, so that's the biggest thing. I mean, Live Golf was a gift to Ponte Vedra Beach. And, you know, they haven't changed. Um, so that, that's, that's, been a, that's been a disappointment. When you were, when you were playing you know, people knew that you had a curious mind and that you you were not just out there uh, trying to do the best you could. In addition to trying to do uh, the best you could week in and week out, you you took an interest in the governance and, and the, the business of what was going on. At that time, what did what made the most sense in terms of what the PGA Tour owned and what made the least amount of sense? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. That, so, so when I was on the board, it was a different time, right? We had Tiger; he was in the peak of his powers. Um, and, and we didn't have any; we had no competitors. I mean, literally, we had no competitors. And so, you could run the organization a little bit. You could run a bloated organization. You could run with opposite field events. By the way, I was an opposite field event guy, so I, I benefited from the bloat. But there was no place for these guys to go. I mean, Tiger couldn't say you know what, I'm going to go play the European tour and do something else. There was no, nobody was going to offer him the same amount of, from a, I mean, it's the United States of America. It's the biggest economy in the world. It's the biggest global stage. No one could, no one could remotely um, offer him the same economic package, whether it was Tiger or Phil or, or DJ or anybody. Um, so that was a hard, that's a hard to say what we owned that we didn't have to own. I mean, I make an argument. I mean, look, Austin, Austin was the match play did almost $26 million last year and it left. Um, Austin country club sort of like this. There was some the push and pull. So owning a venue, I kind of understand that it's not a, it's not, it's not a great business to own a venue and it's a lot of capital, but I think there's ways to partner with, you know, local organizations and local, local owners of golf courses and, and country clubs. Or maybe you, you you have an equity stake, but um, I mean I think now what they'll probably I think the international side of the Presidents Cup is definitely something that they that'll be monetized. I mean it makes PJ Tour owns both sides of that. Your the Ryder Cup is really really good because Europe controls one side and the PJ Tour or the PJ of America controls the other. I think the international side of the Presidents Cup it also will alleviate that thorny issue of what to do with the Joaquin Neiman's of the world and the Cam Smiths of the world and those guys who clearly should be on that team on the international side, but don't qualify right now. So I think that gets monetized. Um, I think that the DP world store, I, I mean, I just, I don't, I don't know what they'll do, but I think you'll see, I think you'll see assets kind of shed. And what you want to do when you own assets is you want to say, okay, is there someone that's a better owner than I am? And I think the international side of the president's cup is one, one instance where you can point to say, yeah, the, and an international side would be a better owner than the PGA Tour owning both sides. And you get with Mike and you, Mike Weir and you get with Ernie Els and you get with Trevor Elliman and you get with these guys and say, hey, look, what do you think? This is what this is how we think about it. But you guys are the you guys built this. You guys built this event. We want we want you to have input on it. But this is what we're thinking. Do you guys think this is a good idea? And I think then then you get into those conversations. I look at like the the the, the TPC network. Um, yeah. It's high times for owners and operators. I understand that. Um, yeah. I I've always felt that first of all that that is a meat grinder of a business, um, yeah. and I don't necessarily think it makes complete sense for for the membership of the PGA Tour to be owning and operating dozens and dozens of facilities. I, I would honestly I'd shop them. Um, it's it's top of the market right now. Um, the other thing is, and I'm not I'm not I'm not saying, hey, look, you should shed this, shed that. 
I think it's great that PGA Tour champions exist. And these yeah. other these other developmental tours as well, those are cost centers. Do you think the SSG is going to take a hard look at, at these things that are, are one's nostalgic, the other several are develop, developmental uh, to, to ease the, the financial burden of a lot of this stuff? Well, I, th I think that there's it would be naive to think that private equity is not going to come in and take a sharp pencil and, and take a look at everything. Um, one thing about the Champions Tour, I'll say this, is that um, there's a guy named Woods that is going to turn 50 in two years. <laughs> so, you know, um, it, it, and Joe, that's it. And look, that's a game changer. And I'm not it, being hyperbolic here. His participation will outrate regular tour events. I'm not joking. It will. Yeah. You know, and, and, that, and that's right. And, and Tiger's Tiger probably understands. I mean, he, no, he doesn't probably. He understands that. So what does his schedule look like? And how many does he want to play? What does he want to do? And then you look at it and say, you know, okay, this. I mean, I've always thought that you talk about a great team concept. The Champions Tour, these guys are the best corporate corporate representatives we have in the game. Right. And, and I mean, who's to say that you shouldn't have a team Merrill Lynch and a team Goldman Sachs and a team AT&T, team Verizon or whatever, and have it the greatest corporate kind of corporate team event, you you know, with the, their customers walking inside the ropes with everybody wearing the hats and all that stuff. You can you can make the, the Champions Tour, you can make it work economically. I mean, I think it they probably because of him. Because of him, but I also think you can do it. You got to change the. You got to change the. You got to. You got to change the fundamental um, tournament and what that looks like. But you can. You can make that work. Um, I'm. I'm convinced of it. It might be team. It might be whatever. But you can make the Champions Tour work. It's going to look different, but you can make it work. Um, and and believe me, it'll it'll probably be changed. I mean, SSG will not. You do not spend a billion five and then spend another billion five without taking out cost and without looking at everything that's a money loser, you are going to change it fundamentally. And I think that, I think everyone has to really understand that, um, that, that will come with time, but we're, and we're in the honeymoon phase. The honeymoon phase is always, you know, um, always fun, but it'll, it'll get, it'll change. And, um, you know, champions tour will be, that, that'll be looked at, I'm sure. But those guys, I, I am confident that you can make that work. Um, change is always difficult, but you can make the Champions Tour work. You might have to lower the age. You might have to do a couple different things. Um, and I think there's ways to protect the Ben Crenshaws of the world who are infinitely more valuable than the Joe Ogilvies of the world. And corporations want to talk to Ben Crenshaw, and Joe Ogilvie is a nice guy. <laughs> you know, and so you 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 have to you have to figure out ways to, you know, marry that. Maybe maybe in a team event, maybe it's a scramble. Um, maybe it's a, you know, two man scrambles, and you have six people on a team, and you have so so you can do it, and you can do it. Corn Ferry Tour, I think is I think is very it's triple A baseball, right? You need a farm club, and you need you need to educate these guys on how to travel and everything else. We have a ton of our members that came through the corn ferry system and it's really really good and i think when you you know let's say if opposite field events are no longer with this there's an opportunity to make corn ferry tour you know super tournaments where you win one of those and maybe you graduate straight to the pga tour i mean once a guy has his card on the corn ferry tour does it help him to play another 15 or 20 events maybe you have you know, every 10 tournaments, you have four guys graduate up to the PGA Tour in season or something like that. I mean, I think there's I think there's ways to do this that, again, competition allows you to do certain things that you couldn't do before. And but to your point, Latin American Tour, Canadian Tour, you used to have the Asia Tour. You know, some of that some of that is, you know, let let somebody let somebody really concentrate and try to make it the best they can be with with was looking at that with a, um, you know, be fanatical with those tours and maybe they 
we give them something. Graduates get the the nation or the corn ferry tour, but um, maybe we don't own and operate them. The, I mean, that makes that makes sense. And I I I I I like the idea of of graduating based on, you know, the the, the performance of of winning. And and we've had different incarnations of of. It started as a battlefield promotion, and then that wasn't good branding anymore. And then you know they they made it something else, but. If you do that, you're already, we already know that there, it's challenging to find starts for existing members. So yeah. we, are, we are headed down this path of a two-tier system, which is not, a, it's not altogether a bad thing. What's the most effective way to sell a two-tier system, which exists already, but it's becoming even more crystal clear that there are these events and there are these events? Yeah. I so I, th I think if you wrote, if you're if we're talking the signature series, if we're just talking yeah. the PGA tour yeah. and if you rotate the signature series events, I think you mitigate some of that because everybody, everybody gets a bite at the apple. Well, how does that contract look? If you're, if you're a signature series event one year and you're not for two more. Yeah. Well, it, it works just like any other contract. I mean, you, you, you can, let's say, let's say the number you want to get to is 40 million and for three years or so, or whatever the number is, you know, 12, 12, uh, 16, you sure, know, uh, whatever, sure. whatever the number. Yep. I mean, those are, those numbers might be low, but um, you, you can get that. I don't, I don't think that that's a big deal. That That's just contract law and you can get with your partners and you're, you're giving them something every three years that all of a sudden it's boom. Okay. This is great. Um, now, some people would argue that, okay, you've cheapened my other two years. But I don't I don't know if that's I don't know if that's true or not, um, because once you go to a calendar year schedule again. This is the first year where if you had a PGA Tour card and you told me where you finished on the money list, I could tell you your schedule. I, I didn't have to ask you, are you taking this off or this off? You're not because you have to play every single week. You have to play the 500 point events if you finished 78th on the money list or 78th on the FedEx Cup points last year. You have to play them. You can't take them off because you're only going to get in. I think a guy who finished 78th is going to get in 19 tournaments this year that are full points. I don't. I don't know what the Genesis Scottish Open is because I don't. I don't know the eligibility. I forget what the eligibility right. is because you've got the DP World Tour taking some spots and you've got all that kind of stuff. So, but I know your schedule. So the fields this year are going to be better, and. You're also going to, I'm assuming, I don't know this, no one's talked about it, but I'm just, you know, when you start thinking through what's going to happen is as you reduce the number of cards, guys are going to play more. I mean, and if you reduce the number of cards, and I said this, I think know, we're seeing that this year already, Joe, and that's going to yeah, continue. You, know, you have to, right? And so yep. if you do reduce the number of cards, guys are going to play every week. I mean, these guys, there's so much money in the game now. PGA Tour players, and I said this two years ago, they're going to have more of an athletic career. And that athletic career is going to be in the NBA. You're going to, you, sure, you've got LeBron James and you've got Tom Brady and you've got these guys, but, you know. 10, 12 years. A of, yeah, a lot of these careers are going to be, you know, six to nine years. The best will play 12 to 18. I mean, look at these kids. You got Nick Dunlap and you got Ludwig Oberg and you've got. I mean, you've got the uh, how, how do you pronounce it? Ha, uh, the twins from Den. Uh, oh, Hoygard. Hoygard. So yeah. You, I mean, you've got you've got all these young guys coming in. It's yeah. incredible the amount of talent that are just. I mean, Caleb Sirach went to went to live, but you you just have. It's going to get younger. I mean, when I got on tour in 1999, I think there were six of us that were under 25. I yeah, mean, prime is definitely it's trending. There's no doubt. You're right. Um, so, the the so, idea so we're, that we're, that you 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 started to get to, like riding that high high at 30, no, it's now it's now 24 to 26, 27. There's no doubt that 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 achievement. They're not waiting longer. They're not waiting their turn. They're more ready. Um, I, I I there's no doubt. I I agree with that. Um, let me let me ask you about the public investment fund because it was interesting. And it's always interesting to see Rory's position on things. Um, there, there have been some dramatic evolution of opinion from him. The Olympics, steadfastly opposed. 
yep. took shots at the whole thing right before it in 2016. And I know part of that was, was, was a personal thing. He was used as a political football and it was uncomfortable. Uh, and it really was an intensely personal thing. And then he went to, he went to Tokyo and, and now he is beating the drum. And, and, you know, Liv and his, he just loathed it. And I'm not suggesting he's wrapped his arms around Liv now, but right. there is a combination of get over it. It's, it's, we need it now, resignation, whatever it may be. Does the PJ Tour absolutely, and does SSG positively need PIF investment? I think need is a strong word. Okay. Right? I mean, if, if you look at this and say, okay, I've got lives put, or sorry, the PIF is put in, let's say they've spent two and a half to 2.8 billion to date on live. Um, SSG just valued the PGA Tours equity at 12 billion pre, 13 and a half billion post. So, I mean, that 12 billion in equity is still what? four and a half times what the PIF is invested to date. I mean, that's a pretty good fortress to defend yourself. But I think Rory looks at the PIF as almost like the, the if you're a Star, Star Trek fan, the Borg. I mean, resistance of, is futile. You will be assimilated. And, you know, when you've got someone that's throwing that type of money at you, um, it's really hard. I mean, you know, if you if you look at the guys who went, I mean, I don't, I don't blame them. I mean, these, these numbers are, these are, these really Major League Baseball, NBA, and and um, NFL type numbers for a sport that, you know, we we don't get those, we don't get the viewership, and so, and no one's ever done this before, so it was just like, wow. Um, but I, I think that you know you got to hand it to the guys that didn't take it, that that, that kind of hitched their wagon to the PGA Tour, um, that looked at it like, okay, we still have the biggest stage to play on. Um, I, I get, I get where worries all over the place. Um, I think it's highly likely, and I said this from the beginning, that international golf is sort of grand. It's kind of green field. I mean, if you look at the DP World schedule, it is. I mean, if the PGA Tour has a bloated schedule, I don't even know what the DP World Tour schedule is. I mean, it's it's got. I mean, you had the South African Open going on the same time as the, as the may have been the Australian PGA or maybe the Australian Open. Maybe they were on the same date. Yeah, exactly. the month of December, a lot of, And they yeah. were like, they yep. were DP World Tour events. I mean, so you have a crazy bloated schedule on the DP World Tour. Um, and so I always thought that the PIF and the DP World Tour and the PGA Tour can say, okay, let's, let's do international golf over here. PGA Tour, the U.S. Tour really, really works. I mean, You've got the most consistent weather. You've got three time zones. You've got the biggest country in the world, best economy in the world, or biggest economy in the world. Um, you have ease of use. It's pretty darn good. You've got three majors. You have the Players' Championship. So from March 1st to, call it July 1st, golf is the United States. Um, so if you look, if you just take that as, as okay, that's where golf is, I... I kind of saw like the PIF internationally that kind of made sense to me. Um, do they need, I think it's, I think you got to separate it, right? PIF DP world tour, PGA tour. Okay. Cash infusion, whatever that looks like. PIF gets a minority ownership. What happens to live? Because if you're SSG and you're the PGA tour and you're the DP world tour and players own that entity, and SSG owns part of that entity already. You, you, no one can afford to take on live, right? I mean, it's it's going to lose, you know, somewhere in the four hundred fifty to six hundred million dollar range this year. So you can't. I mean, four hundred fifty million dollar purses, and the the television product that they put out is incredible with with TV stands on every. Or, I mean, it's things they can literally televise every hole, which is they spent a lot of money. And it's huge capex. So you can't, no one can take on live except the PIF. And so you almost have to do a deal without live over here. And I don't know. I what, One thing I will say, the PGA Tour and the PIF and SSG, there's been no leaks on what the talk has been with, with, with no. the PIF. And, and no one knows. 
Um, so maybe they have a grand plan. Maybe they have this whole thing that they're going to put together and it's, um, but I, I just don't know. Maybe the PIF's involved with, you know, what I want to do with the president's cup. Um, I just don't, I just don't know uh, what that looks like, but I do know live almost has to be separate because no one can afford it right now. Now maybe, maybe it works later. Maybe this deal helps it make work and they get TV and, but it's really hard because what, if, if I sign Gary Williams to play for the New York Yankees and you go out on a three game series with the Boston Red Sox and you hit 10 home runs and 25 RBIs and, you know, you make an amazing thing. And I've already paid you a hundred million dollars to be a Yankee. I don't pay you for that series. Right. And so if I've played John Rahm $300 million, you don't go pay for a 20 or $25 million purse. And so that's the, that's the bugaboo, right? I mean, I get contracted players are interesting. I mean, that's a, that's a new concept. We can argue on the money. That's whatever, but the, but the, the contracted guarantee and then the purse on top of that, it just, no one can, I don't, I don't see how that model works. And then you take it leagues need geography. There's, there's the F1, I think is the only sport in the world that the geography is global. Mm. I guess tennis is global. Tennis, but tennis is, but tennis is tennis is very f fractured and fragmented. And when it, it split it, apart, it did irreparable harm, and and it also coincided with with American men drying up as as top five players. But nonetheless, yeah, I understand your point. Yeah, and it's a you know tennis is a bit of a dumpster fire financially too. So you have you know, no one understands it. So you have leagues need geography and live is kind of everywhere. And so it's really tough to do a TV deal because the public, even with streaming sports is different. And the reason people pay so much for sports is because there's time slots, there's people, it's the only thing you have to see live. And when you have, you know, you're playing in Singapore and you're playing Australia, which I think is great, great globally, Americans, it's tough to tune in at three o'clock in the morning. And, and so that's a hard thing. And so leagues need geography. Um, or at least that's, I think that's a consistent theme for successful leagues. So, so live is going to have to be in these negotiations, I think separate. And I just don't, no one knows it'd be great if, you know, uh, H E or Yasser would, would kind of make his ideas known to the, to the golf world. I think that would go a long way for it because he's got, He's got Greg Norman is kind of, you know, that's the face of it. And, you know, Greg, Greg um, stokes a lot of emotion in the golf world. And it's not um, people dismiss it, you know, on it, on its people dismiss it because Greg's involved. And so, you know, it'd be great if, if, if he, if Yasser would come out and say, this is, this is my vision. This is what I want. The, um, yeah, well, here's the thing about about Yasser and about them, and and I, I rely on somebody who's done a lot of business with them uh, in in the sports uh, atmosphere, and it's a kabuki dance. It's it is it's very different. Um, market principles don't necessarily apply. Um, compromise is is a word they're unfamiliar with, um, and so it's not an easy partnership. And oh, by the way, you know, look this 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 thing that came out a couple of weeks ago about about entrapment and kidnapping and all that it's one thing to take their money it's another thing to 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 have to do photo ops and i don't know what's going to happen with that but this is a swallow hard kind of like not just once maybe for the foreseeable future which is which is challenging and and i say that and I ask you this why wouldn't the public investment fund just buy the dp world tour you then own the Ryder Cup on the European side. You have a foothold in the Middle East where all top players have gone to start the year. You have very attractive venues in the fall. <laughs> I mean, think about, I mean, from Wentworth to the Dunhill Links to the Italian. I mean, they, they, like you said, they're bloated, but you strip away all that stuff and you insert some of these, you know, you go to live with respect to Australia, obviously Saudi, um, why, why wouldn't they just buy the DP World Tour? Yeah, I mean, um, and that that's probably part of the negotiations, right? I think the PGA Tour owns 40% of it. 
Um, and yeah, I think the DP World Tour is really interesting. I mean, it, it would be interesting to have a have yeah, the a, tour subsidizing all of their deals, Joe. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, it's 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 a it's a mess. But you've got, I mean, you've got a bunch of tournaments that are national opens. I mean, you said the Italian Open, the French Open, the um, Spanish the Open. Open. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 amazing. And and so there's there's a look. I think they could make a. I think they could make a. I think it'd be better for international golf if the DP World Tour was fully funded. I think you're going to lose some people, you know, that's currently on the PGA Tour to go over there. But I, I look, if I'm a player, I want competition, um, and I think it's very healthy to have those, to have, you know, a DP World Tour that's very number one financially viable and fully funded. And if you had a partner that could spend a lot of money and and create something over there, I think that would actually enhance, believe it or not, the PGA Tour. I mean, it used to be, I remember, it was really cool when Seve Ballesteros came over and played Westchester before the U.S. Oh Open. Oh, my gosh. And, like that. and I think and that Greensboro, an, by the way. You would go to Greensboro, yeah. North Carolina. I mean, I, I think there's enough global talent that it would be great to develop stars that were, you know, that, that that Americans got to see on our tour, you know, five or six times. I mean, if if you gave me the PGA Tour and you gave me a fully funded DP World Tour and you said, all right, go compete. Well, OK. I mean, <laughs> I've got the United States of America. I've got three time zones that I have my golf tournaments on. I've got three of the four majors that are played on my soil. <laughs> I feel pretty comfortable I can compete under that scenario. I might lose guys. I, I will definitely lose guys. Live is live is taking guys. But I can compete under those scenarios. And if I'm a player, I want there to be great tournaments in September, October, November, December. I mean, if I'm the best player in the world, I want those events to be great. I want the Australian Open, where we made reference to this, to be great. The Japan Open. I mean, I think Japan's what the number four largest economy in the world. I want the Jap I want the Japan Open to be huge. I want to go play that. Um, I I don't know. I think that there's something on the international side, and I think if I'm a player, especially if I'm a top player, I benefit if international golf is strong. And if I'm worried about it, and I'm inside of you know I'm running the PGA Tour, I can I feel comfortable that I can compete with that, and I feel comfortable I can compete with a fully funded, you know. Uh, competitor and you know it would make me better it's going to make my tournaments better it's going to make my guys better it's going to make everybody better and then i give my guys a chance to go play internationally and i can probably partner and and create something some type of international series when my season's done and you know and i i enhance the gl global game I mean, if i go down and make great tournaments in australia or great tournaments in asia great tournaments in japan china wherever all of that's going to do is it's going to develop the next great star the next great jason day the next Hideki Matsuyama, the great um, uh, Hao Tong Lee. It's gonna, it's uh, sure. Sun Jae M. It's gonna, it's gonna create these new guys, and they're gonna come out of the woodwork. There's just gonna be more of them, and so long term, that's a long term greedy strategy. If I'm the commissioner of the PGA Tour, that I might have some pain to compete at the beginning, but long term, everyone's gonna benefit, and I think the global golf system is gonna benefit. Two, two last things. They're not for sale, um, but do you think the strategic sports group uh, should find out what the what the ridiculous sticker price would be for the Ryder Cup and the PGA Championship? And obviously, the tour's got a piece of the Ryder Cup already. Um, but but to, to to purchase that major, um, and if the PGA of America, you know, you talk about it, and again, I'm I'm speaking in kind of an outlandish hypothetical here. You, you know, pension and health care and those types of things for their membership. Yeah, they lose these really amazing, you know, hood ornaments uh, to put their organization in front of. Would you pursue purchasing those? Um, not at the beginning. What I would what I would do and Seth Waugh has he referenced this at the last Ryder Cup, that the economics are so skewed right now. That I mean, the PGA Tour. I think twenty three out of the twenty four guys that played in the Ryder Cup this year were tour members. Yep. And the the economic split is the PGA Tour gets twenty percent of the U.S. based television rights. 
nothing of the gate, nothing of the corporate sponsorships, nothing of the, you know, all that kind of stuff. So number one, I think you've got to, I think you got to redo the economics and then you can talk about purchasing or partnering or whatever, you know, it's a little bit inefficient because they've got two tournaments basically that they do this. PGA tour has a bunch. There's economies of scale that could, that could happen. Um, you get a lot more efficient. Those events could be, you know, um, those events could, could continue to grow. Um, you know, our players could, I don't think our players want to be paid, but I think our players do understand that on the president's cup, they are paid because the president's cup is in the, is in our television package. And so that's a, that's a tent pole event that when NBC buys it and we put it with, you know, 10 other tournaments, it makes, it makes those 10 other tournaments worth more money on the television package. And so our, our players that play in the president's cup benefit um, and the Ryder cup, you know, it's not in our television package. So I think that that's what those guys were saying. I mean, it wasn't reported very well. And of, and of course it was during being reported during the tournament. So there was a little bit of, and it was on European soil. So there was a little bit of, uh, you know, poster board uh, talk on that. But I think that that's what, you know, the Cantleys of the world and the, and the Shoffleys of the world were more referring to. Um, so I think you negotiate the economics and then you, you know, you get with Seth and you say, look, what's, what's, what do we got? Um, it's beneficial for the PGA Tour to own, or at least to put those two events in the television package. And it's and it's beneficial to PGA of America to kind of say, okay, we're going to run these in conjunction because you can get better vendor deals and you can get if you're if you're, you know, if your package is bigger. So there will probably be something happen there, um, I would imagine. But okay. it's you know, I would I would want to negotiate it first to get the economics right and then. And then you go from there. Okay. Last thing, the equity piece of this for the players themselves, um, the premise that it's going to be staggered, there's going to be some like performance parameters, maybe legacy equity uh, afforded to, to certain players. Does all of that jive in your world uh, as far as it, do, do, is there a potential for a lawsuit from a, a faction of the membership going, wait a second. This, this, you know, the, the idea of it being tiered in the manner in which it is uh, doesn't work for us. Does this get resolved easily, comfortably? No, but it'll get resolved, <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> there'll be a lot of lawyers. <laughs> um, but that's where I think that, I mean, look, there's been 602 individual winners of the PGA Tour since, I think, 1969. Um if Tiger gets the most equity and Jack and Arnold get, a, you know, the most of the veteran members and you kind of work down from there and there's an algorithm based on wins and cuts and yada, yada, yada. I, I don't know. I think that the legacy guys um, should probably get 3% of the equity. And that's, I mean, we're not talking huge, huge numbers, but I think it does. We revere the past on the PGA tour and golf in general, talk about Hogan and talk about Bob Jones and talk about all these guys and when Jack and Arnold and a few other guys made the PGA Tour or started the PGA Tour in 1969, um, you know, it might be if you've won a few tournaments or whatever, you get $100,000. But, you know, back th those guys that are 80 and 90, $100,000 is a lot of money. Um, and I, I think they should do that. And then as far as the stars on the PGA Tour and the needle movers and the guys who turned it down uh, to go with Piff, they're going to get an outside package and, um, you know, we can argue and people can argue whether it's right that they get equity or not. But I mean, look, we times have changed and, you know, I think this is where I think this is where we are. And um, I also think that if you give these guys equity and um, it's meaningful enough that you now kind of switch the conversation on it's getting it's it'd be easier to get the guys from live that want to play back on the PGA tour because again I go back to it if I'm an owner and Gary Williams is went to live and you know you're the you just want a major or something um I want you to play the players championship it's in my best interest that is that is 
one of the top two events that I have, well, top three. So we got the FedEx Cup, we got the President's Cup, and we got the Players' Championship. Players' Championship is, it's always been the best field in golf. It's always been an underrated tournament, even though, you know, it's a very high, I mean, it's just an incredible event. Well, why do you think it's underrated? Well, just because you've got a hundred and you've got 125 guys that play, then you've got everybody in the top hundred in the, in the, in the world. Um, I mean, you truly do have the best field in golf on a golf course that, I mean, is terrifying. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's very provocative. I, 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 the reason I ask you that is I, I think it is too. Uh, and I think part of the reason why it, it kind of has this kind of weird place in the game is because for too long, people have been trying to force feed the notion that it's the fifth major. I was in a meeting, this was five to six years ago with Jay. And I said, do you like that? Do you like being called that? And he kind of, he said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, first of all, if you're a major, you're a major. There's no, yeah. there's, there, there's, and, and I get it. I get how people, you know, rank it. I'd rather win this and that. But at the end of the day, the, the, the weightiness, it's the same. We don't, we don't look at Jack's PGAs any different in terms of the number. Right. I, I think that that has kind of in a weird way kind of, kind of weirded out the whole perception of what it is. I think we've also put the majors in such a place that, that it's hard to put anything else even close. It's by far the next best thing you can win in golf, and that's great. Why yeah. can't that it's just be great? Yeah, it's the great. It's just a great, great event, and it's it stands on its own. And, exactly. Um, and it is. I mean, look, I when I played it, I had to get rotator cuff surgery because I had so many drops um, back when you <laughs> used to drop at uh, shoulder level. So I mean, it, it was a heart attack a minute, and it's so much fun to watch those last. You know, I think Dean Beeman called them the gauntlet, um, and, and it could. But we got to get back there where it's the best field in the world. And I think the way you do it with equity is you can get back there quicker if these guys are participating and you kind of, you talk over the business side. I know these guys, the, you know, some of them, the head, their eyes are going to roll back in their skull when you start talking about the business side of the PGA tour, but it really matters and it, it'll go a long way. You need to communicate it. We haven't been the best at communicating lately, but I, I think that there's a way to do this. I could be just Pollyanna and, you know, pie in the sky, but I think there's a way to do this that we get back to where the game needs to be. And, um, you know, I, I think that the players championship and, and those tent pool events could be where you start to see a coming together. It won't be just the majors, but we'll be, we'll be a part of that. I hope at least I hope. Listen, I, I greatly appreciate the time. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. I hope to see you sooner uh, than, than later. Thank you so much for doing this. Hey, thanks, Gary. And you know, you know where to get me on AOL. So, uh. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. You, you will die on that hill. Uh, you, you, I mean, you really are the old Tom Morris of, yeah. of internet communication. Yeah, I am. Um, you've got mail. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it, Gary. Well, really appreciate Joe taking the time. There, there's a lot there to unpack, and there's going to be so much more because the public investment fund part of this is really the biggest part for, you know, look, $1.5 billion big, could go to three. Uh, it's the business of men's professional golf. I do bristle when I hear the game, the game, the game. This is not the game. The game is you putting your ball in the hopper or you planning a member guest and going on a, on a boys trip or a women's trip to play the game. That's the game. This is the sport, the business of professional golf. It's a big difference, but appreciate him. Most importantly, appreciate all of you out there watching and listening to this Five Clubs Conversation. <laughs>